Hi everyone, welcome to this video tutorial on uh, predicting concrete strength using PyTorch machine learning library. These are all some of the key steps involved in this uh, machine learning model development process. In this tutorial, we are going to explore uh, each one of the step in detail. First, let's import uh, the necessary libraries. NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib are used for uh, general purpose programming like array and matrix operations, data reading and uh, writing and plotting purposes. Next, PyTorch library. It is a open source machine learning library originally developed by Facebook AI, now Meta AI. And currently it is a part of Linux Foundation. It is one of the very popular uh, deep learning frameworks available for machine learning. Using this uh, PyTorch machine learning library, you no need to worry about the complicated math involved in machine learning. PyTorch takes care of everything in the background so you can explicitly focus on building and training reliable machine learning models. It also works well with uh, graphical processing units, GPUs and make your model run faster. Many researchers and uh, students use PyTorch for their research purposes. So it's a great choice for diving into the exciting world of machine learning and AI. If it's installed, that's fine. If it is not installed, you can install use it using uh, pip install torch command. Next, you have to install this uh, scikit-learn library. It is also a very popular open source machine learning library that provides a wide range of tools for uh, machine learning and uh, data analysis tasks. From this sklearn uh, module, I'm importing two functions, train test split and uh, r2score. The first one is used to uh, split the given data set into training and uh, testing data sets. And, uh, and the second one is used to evaluate this uh, R square value. R square value is a very useful statistical metric for assessing the goodness of fit of a machine learning model. Basically, it tells us how well our model matches the data. A higher score means it's doing a good job. But remember, no model is 100% perfect. There is always some part of the data that any machine learning model cannot um, explain. For example, an R2 score of uh, 0.8 means that 80% of the patterns in the given data are captured by the machine learning model and uh, while the remaining 20% of the data patterns are not explained. Let's import these uh, libraries into our uh, notebook. Next, we need to read the data into this notebook. This data has been downloaded from um, UCI machine learning library. Here are the links you can use to download. Our data contains uh, eight input features, namely cement quantity, blast furnace, slack quantity, fly ash, water, super plasticizer, coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, age, and one output feature that is the concrete compressive strength. Our objective is to predict this concrete compressive strength using this uh, PyTorch machine learning library. Let's convert the pandas data frame to a numpy array using this uh, two underscore numpy function of this pandas. Generally, when we are using PyTorch, it is uh, recommended to use uh, PyTorch tensors for several reasons, such as uh, numerical stability. And uh, PyTorch tensors are uh, very good and can easily interact with uh, other PyTorch functions and modules, including neural network layers and uh, several loss functions of this uh, PyTorch module. You can convert this uh, given NumPy array to a PyTorch tensor using this uh, tensor function of uh, PyTorch library. Next, we are splitting up the input and uh, output data into two sets of uh, one for testing and, and the other for training. So I'm taking a test size of 0.2. That is 80% uh, of the data is used for training and 20% uh, of the data is used for uh, testing. Here you notice we did not specify any random state variable, which means that uh, each time you run this code, you will get a different uh, random split of the data. We intentionally did this because randomness is uh, very important for developing robust and uh, reliable machine learning models. Next, I am creating uh, two functions to build uh, this machine learning model. The first one I have created with uh, one hidden layer with 10 neurons and uh, the second one I created with uh, more hidden layers and with multiple number of uh, neurons in each hidden layer. Hidden layers in a neural network are like uh, intermediate processing stages. These layers extract uh, useful patterns and uh, features in the data. We use sequential submodule of uh, NN module to build this neural network. Uh, here we use linear layers. These linear layers are also known as uh, fully connected layers because they connect every input neuron to 
every output neuron like this this is the input layer and uh, this is the output layer in a linear layer we connect each neuron in the input layer to all the neurons in the output layer next we use a uh, relu activation function the full form of relu activation function is a rectified uh, linear unit it looks like this we use activation functions to enable the neural network to model complex patterns in the data learn hierarchical features and also to avoid uh, overfitting next we define the function to train and test the machine learning model in this i'm using this uh, mean square error loss function this loss function measures the average square difference between uh, the predicted values and the actual target values the goal during the training is to minimize this uh, loss and make the neural network predictions as close as possible to the actual targets next optimizer Optimizer defines the optimization algorithm for uh, updating the neural network parameters such as weights and biases during training. In this tutorial, Adam Optimizer is used, which is a very popular and effective optimization method. It takes model parameters such as uh, weights and biases and adjusts them continuously to minimize the loss. Uh, the learning rate determines the step size at each iteration when updating these parameters. The optimizer's job is to find the parameter values that minimize the loss function and improve model's performance. Next, we define the main uh, training and testing loop of this neural network. In this, generally we call uh, iterations as epochs in the neural network terminology. An epoch is a complete pass through the entire training data set. In other words, it is one full cycle during which the model sees and learns from all the training data. After each epoch, the model has been exposed to the entire data set and its parameters have been updated based on the gradients computed from the entire data set. In each epoch, first we set uh, this model.train mode to be activated. This we are setting because some components of five touch modules such as uh, batch normalizations, dropout, etc. behave differently during training and testing. Hence, by setting this uh, mode, we activate these components in the training mode. Next, we evaluate uh, the predicted values for the given training input features and we are storing them in this variable ypred train tensor. In this stage, the model makes predictions based on the current set of parameter values that are available to it. Next, we evaluate the loss using a mean square error function. That is the criteria that we set to evaluate the loss. The squeeze function is used to ensure that uh, the shapes of the arrays, y pred train and uh, y train are matching with each other. Once the loss evaluation is done, then we set the gradients to zeros using this uh, Gradients are used during back propagation to update the model parameters. By zeroing them out at the start of each iteration or epoch, we make sure that gradients are latest and that there is no accumulation happening from the previous iterations. This is where uh, the back propagation occurs. The backward method computes gradients of the loss with respect to model's parameters. These gradients are essential for adjusting the parameters in the right direction to minimize the loss. After computing gradients, this step function of the optimizer updates the model parameters using uh, the optimization algorithm specified, uh, in this case, uh, the Adam optimizer. It adjusts uh, the parameters based on uh, computed gradients to minimize the training loss. This step is the heart of the training process where the model learns from the data, means the weights and biases are uh, updated based on the gradients. If you like our content, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe to our channel. Happy learning. Thank you.